Hello, good evening. Welcome to this one. I'm Shanika Pereira. And I'm Clifford Richard. First of all, a look at the headlines. 2,460 National Science Teacher Trainee Diploma holders have been given teaching appointments. The President pledges to remove the fuel adjustment charge following the adding of coal power to the national grid. The Uva Provincial Council sits for the first time without opposition members. People the world over commemorate the Earth Day. Over half of Guantanamo Bay detainees being under armed strike. Now if we look at those and other stories in detail, 2,460 National Science Teacher Training Diploma holders have been recruited to teacher service. A ceremony to present appointment letters was held at Temple Trees in Colombo today under the auspices of President Mahindra Raj Baksa. This batch of newly recruited teachers has already completed three years teacher training in 18 faculties of science. They were engaged in service considering the requirement of teachers in schools countrywide. Appointment letters were handed over to another batch of candidates who qualified in Education Administration Service Grade 1. The President told the newly recruited teachers that the teaching profession is more honourable than all other jobs in the society. He added that the whole society is expecting teachers to mould children as a disciplined generation and this task is beyond the teaching of relevant subjects. He extended his well wishes to newly recruited teachers, wishing them courage and strength to fulfill this responsibility in a proper manner. Vinaya, atua khatu tu karan apudgale am baat pat kiri me waga kima upinga me balap kote. Insha, adal labi ne waga kima ubahariya kari tu karan nte ubat shaktiya kahiriya labi waai ma prarthana karmi ubat shil dinat me subha patanwa. Education Minister Bandhuri Gunawardena disclosed that several education reforms are being introduced to meet the present needs. He pointed out that they have set a target to increase the number of children studying in science, mathematics and commerce streams by 40% in accordance with the responsibility vested in them by the President. The other task is to increase the information technology literacy to 75% from 35%. He noted that these teacher trainees are receiving appointments today as the teacher generation vested with the task of making necessary changes towards this historic paradigm change. Education Services Minister Duminda Disanayaka and the Supervisory MP of Education Ministry Mohan La Guerrero graced the occasion. Well, various views were expressed on the responsibility of teachers at a ceremony organized in connection with the handing over of teaching appointment letters to teacher training diploma holders today. Well, in one occasion, it, were, it was at a ceremony and it was clearly depicted that a teacher has the ability to do many things. Dancing performance of Shanika Kumari Hera, attached to the Special Education Unit of St. Joseph's Balika Bhutiali Kegor, kept the audience spellbound. She cannot hear the music of because of her deafness. It has been revealed that uh, she has learned dancing by looking at the steps and movements of her dancing teacher. Shanika presented her dancing item before President at the Temple Priest today along with her trainer. Well, after the ceremony, President Rajapaksa met Shanika Herath and her dancing teacher as well. The President has decided to engage a teacher for speech training at her school. Sri Lankan Ambassador in Maldives, Dixon Dalla, has stepped in to sponsor this initiative. The Sri Lanka Cosmetics Devices and Drugs Regulatory Authority says that the sale of certain medicinal drugs has been restricted in accordance with the government's policy of importing only essential drugs. Recommendations of the Technical Consultation Committee appointed for this purpose have been enforced with retrospective effect from the 19th of this month. 
The health ministry has received information that certain people were using cough syrups and tablets to get an extra kick, similar to the effect of narcotics. Eleven people have died after overdosing on these medicinal drugs during the past seven months. The health ministry has decided to ban several of these pharmaceuticals. The sale of medicinal drugs such as codeine, dextromethorphan, falcodine, dihydrocodicine has been banned in private pharmacies. The sale of these drugs has been confined only to state-owned osusalas. A deadline of three months was given for pharmacies to sell the existing stocks of these drugs which were already imported. This decision has been taken by the Technical Consultation Committee after studying the quality and the safety of these drugs. The registration of several other stimulant drugs containing caffeine has also been suspended. The Cosmetics Devices and Drugs Regulatory Authority Chairman Dr. H. Benrugama said they came to know that these things were created by business enterprises. Therefore, measures have been taken to suspend the importation of several types of syrups. According to Professor Seneca Bibile's report, only essential drugs should be imported to the country. The director of the authority, Dr. Hemantha Benrukama, said that they will not allow businessmen to push patients into difficulties to gain their business objectives. He added the temporary ban will not cause an inconvenience as similar products are available in the market which are effective. Earth Day is observed every year on April 22nd to create awareness and support among the masses to protect the environment. This year's theme is Overcoming Climatic Changes. Well, the event is held worldwide to outreach to the society and raise the issue on the occasion. Well, like every year, the people the world over celebrated the 43rd anniversary of uh, the Earth Day on Monday, the 22nd. In 1969, at the UNESCO conference in San Francisco, the concept to observe Earth Day on March 21st was first proposed by John McConnell. But a month later, Lord Nelson, U.S. Senator from Wisconsin proposed April 22nd as the date. The main objective is to raise the concerns for the planet and to find a sustainable solution for a good environment. The event also aims to grab attention of the governments and people to help the animals, birds, insects and people that are affected by climatic change. Sri Lanka's Minister of Environment and Renewable Energy has taken measures to create awareness among people on how to protect the earth for the future generations focusing attention on climatic change. Changes. Thousands of people participated in a march highlighting the importance of environmental conservation in connection with World Earth Day today. They proceeded to Janakala Center in Bhattarumulla from Kimbulawala Junction in Sri Javadalpura Kote. It was organized by the Ministry of Environment in collaboration with the Sri Lanka Green Building Council. Western Provincial Minister Uday Gammanfila was present. A ceremony was held in Karambo to present certificates and licenses to drivers who have completed tourist driver training. This training program is organized by the Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority with the aim of providing a quality transport service for foreign travelers visiting the island. One million foreign travelers visited Sri Lanka last year. The Tourism Development Authority anticipates that tourist arrivals will increase to 1.2 million this year. The government plans to attract 2.5 million tourists to the island by the year 2016. The Economic Development Ministry implements several programs to improve facilities for these tourists. One such facility is to provide a quality transport service for them. One week training course will be conducted for the members of All Island Tourist Drivers Association with the aim of improving their skills and making their services more efficient. After the completion of this systematic training, they will be accepted as licensed tourist drivers. Around 1,800 drivers countrywide have already received driver training. The 11th batch of 250 drivers received certificates at a ceremony held in Colombo recently. The Chairman of the Tourism Development Authority, Bashar Gunaratna, and Director General Dr. D. S. Jayavira were present. The President has pledged that the fuel adjustment charge will be gradually removed with the addition of power generated from coal power plants to the national grid. He called upon all media institutions to act in a responsible manner when creating awareness on electricity tariff revision among the people. Well, the President made this pledge at a monthly meeting with news division heads of electronic and print media institutions and chief editors at Temple Trees in Colombo today. The government has been able to provide electricity for 94% of the country's population. 
with a high cost. The president pointed out that the government took measures to minimize the impact on the people due to electricity tariff revision. The responsibility of the present administration is to maintain the economy without its collapse while providing subsidies for the needy people. President Rajapaksa noted that the people should be cautious to use electricity sparingly. He revealed that the government is ready to conduct Northern Provincial Council elections in September this year, but it is not ready to bow down to any pressure. The President recalled that the government has been able to conduct the Eastern Provincial Council election following the end of the humanitarian operation against terrorism. He disclosed that the revelations that the relations with India have not been affected in any manner, although certain political groups in South India were acting against Sri Lanka with a different attitude. The government is taking measures to win the hearts of the people in Tamil Nadu, although it is difficult to change the opinion of certain persons against Sri Lanka due to their political agendas. The President vehemently rejected allegations leveled by the United States against Sri Lanka. In a human rights report, the government is fully committed to protect human rights, he said. President Rajapaksa said that action will be taken to bring perpetrators before the law if there were any human rights violations after inquiring about it. Ministers Nimal Siripala de Silva, Basil Rajapaksa, Anura Pridashan Ayapa, Kehelia Ramukwell, Bandula Gunwardana, Pavitra Vanyarachi, Presidential Secretary Lalit Viratunga, Information and Media Ministry Secretary Charita Herat, Power and Energy Ministry Secretary MMC Ferdinando were among those who attended the meeting. The Uva Provincial Council meeting was held in the absence of opposition members for the first time. Opposition Provincial Councillors failed to attend today's meeting. Uva Provincial Council meeting ended within 15 minutes after its commencement with Chairperson Hema Ratnayaka in the chair. Two supplementary estimates of education and health ministries amounting to 133 million rupees moved by the government were passed unanimously. The opposition of the Uva Provincial Council comprises seven UMP members and one JVP member. Well, the inter-signal connectivity between Asia-Pacific countries are to be promoted. The Asia-Pacific Country Signal Workshop organized for this purpose was held in Colombo today. Well, this was the second workshop in the training excursion being organized annually. Over 150 military personnel of 25 Asia-Pacific countries including the United States, Australia, Canada, India, Japan, New Zealand, Singapore, South Korea, Thailand and Vietnam are participating in the workshop. The workshop will conclude on the 26th. Well, the second round of foreign secretary level bilateral consultations were held today between the Sri Lankan and Bangladeshi foreign secretaries. The consultations were held between Sri Lankan foreign secretary Karunathilak Amurugama and Bangladeshi foreign secretary Shahidul Haq. Well, the first of the foreign secretary level bilateral discussions took place in Dhaka in January 2011. The discussions were held based on a protocol signed in April 2003, which provides an institutional framework to review the full range of Bangladesh Sri Lanka bilateral relations. The discussions are expected to review the entire range of Sri Lanka's relations with Bangladesh, with focus on exploring new avenues of cooperation and expanding existing economic relations. Bangladesh Foreign Secretary Secretary Shahidul Haq is in the island on a three-day official visit. A senior journalist, Kaudani Piedas Pereira, has passed away at the age of 71. He was a former editor of the Silumina newspaper. Kaudani Piedasa was ailing for some time. He was an astrologer as well as an author of several books. His body is lying at a private funeral parlor in Boralla to enable the people to pay their last respects. The funeral will take place at the General Cemetery Boralla at 5 p.m. tomorrow. The funeral of veteran broadcaster and journalist Jan Rohana took place at General Cemetery Boralla this evening. He was a poet, writer and a lyricist. The 63-year-old Jayant Rohana also served as program producer and a newsreader of Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. His funeral took place this evening amidst a large number of mourners, including journalists and artists. You're watching Group 1 News and it's time to move on to the trading details of the Colombo Stock Exchange. Mm -hmm.
Thanks, Janaka. That's it on the news, and do enjoy the rest of the programs. Take care. Good night. Good night.